Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Maria. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. Thank you for being here. Thank you for once again clicking that button. And if you haven't done so, I pray that you would consider subscribing and sharing the videos far and wide because this is important information that really needs to get out. Our brothers and sisters, our, our nation, our, our Hebrew brothers and sisters and our Gentile brothers and sisters, we really need to know what's happening during this time. And if the Most High is speaking, we need to know what he's saying. And I am not the only avenue through which he's speaking. He's speaking through many avenues, but we need to know what he's saying to us in this time. So thank you for once again being here. And we're going to continue part four of our series. We began with Do Demons Cause Diseases? And within the same vein of that series as we were talking about pharmacia and about being equipped with the Most High, this, this session, part four, I'm going to entitle The Prince of This World Cometh. The Prince of This World Cometh, but he hath nothing in me. This is going to be the focus of our, our lesson today is the Most High wants us to put on the whole armor of Yah, especially during this time. So let's get started today. Let's get started and hop right into it. Pray that you're doing well today. So we're going to begin reading uh, in John chapter 14. So our Messiah is saying, and now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, ye might believe. Okay, I'm going to pause right there. I'm pausing right there because in our last lesson, we spoke about the Most High sending a word first. The Most High always sends the word first and then the corresponding action. And Messiah is saying here in verse 29, I've told you what was coming. I gave you the word before it happened, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Part of the Most High sending his word first is to build faith in us so that we might believe. And part of it is to build patience so that we wait for the manifestation of the word. Continuing on in verse 30, hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. It's beautiful words of scripture there. I just love reading the words of our Messiah. He's just so beautiful. Wow, just so beautiful. Just want to bask in his goodness. So, what he's telling us in these verses of scripture, first of all, that there is a prince of this world. He's telling us there is a prince of this world and it's a spiritual kingdom that's been in power, that's been ruling and reigning for quite some time. Eventually, there's another more powerful spiritual kingdom that will come and crush Satan's head under our feet shortly. That will happen. That will come. But in the meantime, he's allowing these things to play out as per the Father's commandment, as per the Father's wish because it was the Father's good pleasure to bruise him, to crush him, and to make him an offering for sin. And so that the world knows that he loves the Father, he obeys. He says, because I love the Father, and I want the world to know that I love the Father, I obey the Father. And the same is true for us. We demonstrate our love for the Father by obeying him. So he's telling us that there is a prince of this world, and that he cometh. So you can you can take what Messiah is saying here and you can extrapolate through the Ruach, through the Spirit, that the prince of this world coming and Messiah's death, those two events are related. Remember, the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So if there's killing, stealing, or destroying happening, he's present. So the, the, the father had already opened up the door of opportunity for him to come in and be able to take Messiah's life. So Messiah says, the prince of this world cometh. He saw it. It didn't catch him off guard. He knew it was coming. He knew he was coming. He knew what was coming. And he submitted and surrendered to it because he wanted to be obedient to the father. So the prince of this world cometh and his, he was intent on destroying Messiah. Well, 
the prince of this world cometh again. And his intention is to destroy Messiah's people. But Messiah said something really important here. He said, He hath nothing in me. He hath nothing in me. What does that mean? That means, this is how I see it in the, in, the, in, the, in the spirit realm. This is how I see it. When the enemy of our soul lures us into sin, it's as if he lets out a hook and he hooks us and reels us in much like a, a fish is hooked, hooked and then reeled up and then filleted and made dinner. Well, in the same way, the enemy lets out bait and he hooks, he hooks his, his, his prey and reels them in. So normally there's some sort of lure, something in the person that responds to whatever the enemy is putting out there. There's some, there's something, if, if the person has a weakness for, for pornography, that he puts those images of lust out there so that the person can then turn and look and then be baited and then hooked and then drawn up. Messiah is saying, he doesn't have anything in me. There is nothing in me that he can bait, that he can lead into sin or lead astray because I live to do the will of my Father. And because I live to do the will of my Father, I am pure before him. And there's nothing, there's no match. He can't put out one card and find a match for that card in me because I'm pure before the Most High. And we too have to have that testimony as we are being conformed to the image of our Messiah, we too have to have that testimony where we can say, he hath nothing in me. We cannot be a part of Babylon. We have to come out of it. We cannot be a part of its medical systems, its banking systems. We have to come out. Now, I understand we have bills to pay and we have to be able to participate in the marketplace in some way, shape, or form. But as much as we can come out of it, we need to come out of it. We need to not be partaker of it, lest we partake of her judgment which is soon to come. So I wanted to begin our session together with this understanding, with this knowledge that that Messiah, there was nothing in him that could be baited, that could be hooked into sin. He was fully armored, fully armored with the armor of the Most High. And we, like him, must be fully armored as well. We will be continuing on in Ephesians chapter 6 as we discuss the elements of this armor that we're being told to put on. So we have to understand that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through Yah for the pulling down of strongholds. And there are many strongholds that have been erected against us right now, so we need to be armed up. It says in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahuwah and in the power of his might, and put on the whole armor of Yah, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If we're going to stand against the wiles of the devil, we got, we've got to have on the whole armor of Yah. Okay? But we wrestle. Why? Why is that? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. If we weren't wrestling, if we were wrestling against flesh and blood, we might have a hope. We might have a chance. Maybe we're strong enough or mighty enough or smart enough or rich enough or whatever enough. But because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, there is no chance that we're going to defeat the wiles of the devil in our own strength. No hope of it no hope. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yah, that ye may be able to, to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. This is the first thing that we're to do. So number one on the list, having done all to stand, number one, stand. That's the command. Stand. Endure. Hold on. Don't give up. Stand your ground. Give no quarter. Stand. Continue to hope. Continue to believe. Continue to trust. Continue to keep your eyes fixed on Messiah. Stand. That's the first command. Stand. Stand for truth. Stand for the Most High. Stand for Torah. Stand for what is right. Stand not only in your, in your feeling and your heart 
and your passion, but also stand out in the world. Stand as one who keeps the Most High's commandments and who does what's pleasing in His sight. Stand. Number two, having your loins girt about with truth. The loins are the area of the body that are the reproductive areas. That's where where your your strength is, this your ability to reproduce after your own kind. It's in your loins, so to speak. And so in that area where you're able to reproduce after your own kind, you're able to to be strong in your body and your mind and your soul. The most high is telling us in that area to let that part of yourself be girt with truth. Let your ability to reproduce after yourself, after your own kind, reproduce truth. Follow after truth. The Most High's word is truth. Let your loins, let your reproduction, let let your day in and day out follow after truth. Let the strength of who you are be founded and rooted in truth. The truth of who you are and the Most High and the truth and what Messiah has come to do for, for us. Your loins grow about with truth. Meaning, no fornication. No fornication with the world. No idolatry. No intercourse with the things of the world. But entering into intimacy with the Father and with the Son. Let there be truth in your dealings with man and with the Most High. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Number three. We must place on our breasts, on our chests, On the part of ourselves that covers our hearts, the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate covers, actually cover, physically covers the lungs and the heart, our breathing and our heartbeat. This is crucial for life, the heartbeat and the breathing. No life without those two. They must be covered with righteousness. Our ability to be in right standing with the Most High leads to our life, our ability to breathe, our ability to have our hearts beating. When our hearts are um, in right standing with the Most High and our sins are forgiven and we've been renewed, we are righteous before the Most High and nothing can touch us because we are guarded by His grace. Thank you, Father. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So having a covering on your feet is important in the world, especially if you imagine the region of the, the world where there, it might be deserty or rocky. It's important to have a covering on your feet to protect. And so it is traveling in this world where it's rocky and there's, there's uh, terrain that's uncertain and unsteady. If you think of terrain in terms of being sinful nations and sinful people and wicked schemes and barbs and hooks and nails and hookworms and things of that nature that want to get into your body somehow, some way, then they're going to try to come in through your feet, going to try to come into in those areas where you wouldn't think to, to guard against. You've got to guard your feet. You've got to guard your walk. Our feet represent our walk in the earth, how we traverse and how we travel in the earth, our ministry, so to speak. And we've got to guard our our ministry and guard our testimony so that when people look at us and the things that we do, they can see the Father and He can be glorified in our action. Also exemplified in the feet is our ability to proclaim the good news or the basura to those who are in desperate need of that good news. When you're wearing shoes of purpose and shoes of destiny, you will find yourself transmitting the word of the Most High, not only in your actions, but also in your speech. The Most High will give you opportunities to share and opportunities to bring truth and light uh, in situations with people. You'll be able to go forth and do the work of an evangelist, do the work of evangelism, no matter where you are. It could be in the Walmart, it could be in the Target. No matter where you are, you are aware and equipped and able to share the gospel, share the good news of the Most High because you've got on your purpose shoes, your shoes of purpose. Your feet are covered. Hallelujah. 
above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench all, not some, all the fiery darts of the wicked. Okay. So on this next one here, our ability to quench the darts of the wicked. Remember we talked about those sharp things, those barbs that the enemy uses to try to hook us. So to overcome the fiery darts of the wicked, we've got to take our shield of faith. It is all of it's important. I'm not going to say if you could only have one because they're all important because they work together. They work together. But faith, it's faith is so important. Messiah said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? He didn't say, when I come, will I find righteousness? He didn't say that. He didn't say, when I come, will I find a people? He didn't say, when I come, will they be keeping Torah? He said, when I come, will I, will I find faith on the earth? Because without faith, I, I, I find it very difficult to engage in any of the other activities I just mentioned. Because faith leads to obedience. So the Most High is telling us here that faith is important for quenching and barring and blocking against the fiery darts of the wicked. And know that there are darts. The darts are coming. They're here and they've been here all the time. The, the enemy of our souls always looking to take us out, always looking to hit, make a mark, to hit a target within us, to drag us into sin, to take us out. But if we hold on to faith and we hold on to hope, it won't land. And that's why every day, or not every day, but whenever I do a video, I always encourage all of us to hold on to faith and hold on to Messiah because it's important, especially during these times when many are losing their faith. We're, we're experiencing the great falling away. Many are falling away from their faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. We've got to hold on to our faith in Messiah. And we've got to thank him every day and give praise and honor to him every day that he has given us the means and the mechanism to quench all of the darts of the wicked. What a gift, what a grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your goodness to the children of men. And take the helmet of salvation. That's number six. The helmet of salvation. Salvation covers the head. Salvation covers the head. So to not have salvation is to be like one who has been decapitated, so to speak. Your head is no longer attached to life. No longer attached to life. So, but the helmet will keep your keep your head. And let's say it's a helmet that has something that goes on down to the neck to keep your head and your neck safe and protected. This the helmet of salvation keeps us in the faith. It keeps us and saves us from the wrath of the Most High that's gonna come upon the wicked, gonna come upon those who refuse to be attached to life. It's coming. So the consequences of sin don't find a place in us because first of all, we do know sin if we know him. And if we find ourselves falling prey to it, we have an advocate that we can go to, our head who protects our head. Our head who protects our head. So are, we are saved by faith in our head, Messiah. And he is the one who turns the head of Yasharal back to the Father. Hallelujah. And number seven, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the Word of Yah. Once again, going back to the idea that the Word, it's the Word that goes forth first. It begins with the Word. So the Word goes forth and then the corresponding action. So the word of the Most High Yah is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts, it divides the thoughts from the intent of the heart. It is so fine and so masterful. And this is the sword of the Spirit that the Most High has given to us to do war and to do battle at this time. So if you're going to use the sword of the Spirit, you've got to know what the Most High has said. If you know, want to know where he's going or what he's done or what he desires to do, we've got to know what he said and what he is saying to us now. So not only searching the scriptures and, and gaining for yourself and, and gaining for yourself an arsenal of words to use in battle, but also 
quieting ourselves before him in prayer to see what he has to say to us on a daily basis because he's still speaking. He didn't just stop speaking when the book of Revelation was written. He's still speaking. Thank you, Father. So as we read the words and the scriptures, they become one with us and we become one with it so that when we proclaim it and it comes out of our mouth, it's as if the Most High himself were speaking. It's as if Yahushua Jesus himself were speaking through us because we've become so connected and so one with the word, with the Logos. Number eight, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Ruach and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Prayer is also another important element of this armor that we're putting on. So the instruction from uh, the Apostle Paul here is to pray always. Always. That's a pretty constant prayer. And I know that we have obligations and responsibilities. We have children and families and jobs and, and, you know, hobbies and things of that nature that we want to engage in. But we can be prayerful about everything that we do. We can pray while we're cooking and while we're sweeping and while we're mopping. And even while you're watching a television show, you can pray for discernment. You can pray for the Most High to teach you through the things that that you're watching or show you what you should watch and what you shouldn't. You can live a life of prayer, prayer in every aspect of living, prayer in your singing and prayer in your dancing and prayer in the shower and prayer in the bathroom. Wherever you are can be a life led of being prayerful. So this this commandment is one that can, is practical, even though on the first, it doesn't seem very practical for praying all the time, but it's possible to pray even in your dreams. Ask the Most High if he can help you to have prayerful dreams. And so, with all supplication in the Spirit, so this is us petitioning the Father through the Ruach, through our prayer language, through our heavenly language. And I know there are some who are in the Hebrew movement who say that that's not for today or that's not for us or whatever. My heavenly language is very important to me, and I I believe that I'm warring in the in the Spirit when I use it. And so I encourage each of us to use it especially now where we're, sometimes we're not quite sure what to pray for. And the, the, the Ruach, praying in the Ruach, helps us to do battle. It helps us to pray in a way that it bypasses our mind. So our mind doesn't get in the way. And we can communicate directly to the Father, praying His will back to Him and praying for things and people and circumstances that we might have no no awareness of. There are times when the, the most I will just lead me to pray to pray in my he- heavenly language. And I'm not sure what I'm praying for, but I have this sense of urgency about it. Like, I need to pray. And I don't know what I'm praying for. And the most High is like, well, I don't have time to really explain to you what you're praying for. So if you pray in your language, in your heavenly language, I can communicate through you and to you what I need to communicate through the Ruach without having to deal with your mind. So it's a really important to pray in our heavenly language. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So part of our praying is watching. We're to watch and pray. So we're to watch the things that are happening in the earth. To watch, to see, to be aware, to be as wise as serpents and harmless as dove. To see what the, the, the things that are going on. To even research if the Most High leads you to do so. To watch with all perseverance. To take it seriously. But also to supplicate for each other, for our brothers and sisters, both Hebrew and Gentile, we need to pray for one another because the times are evil, the times are wicked, and it's so rough out here. And so we need to give proper attention and time to prayer because it's a weapon. It's a weapon. I know we don't think about it that way, but it's a weapon. Praying takes you into the very throne room of heaven and that allows you to then petition the Father to fight or to act or to move on your behalf. That is the greatest weapon that I know of. That is more powerful than any nuclear weapon known to man. That's more powerful than any principality, than any power, than anything that the enemy couldn't come up with. And that's why he works so hard to keep us from it. That's why he works so hard to keep us from doing it Prayer is powerful, and the more we do it, 
the more we grow, the stronger we become, and the more influence we have in the lives of the people that we love and in the world. The Most High's people, Yasharal, are to be praying people. We must pray for one another. We must pray for the Most High's will to be done in our lives. And we must pray for the Most High to place His words in our mouth so that we can speak what we hear in the ear. What we hear in the ear, we can shout from the rooftops. All praises to the Most High, Yah. Well, we've come to the end of this lesson and to the end of this session on diseases and demons and pharmacia and the sword of the spirit. But So I will summarize in saying this. We're in a wicked time, an evil time, where we need to be aware of the wiles of the enemy and how he seeks to destroy us using pharmacia and using the masquerade that's happening right now to have us injected with the poison of untruth, of the poison of that which will change us from being redeemable. That's the goal. So we have to be instant in prayer. We have to be instant all the time constant in it and we have to be aware that those around us some of them mean us good and some of us don't and we must pray for for a discernment about who to trust and who not to trust during this time and we have to pray and ask the most high to deliver us safely into his kingdom because we can do that because we just discussed how powerful prayer is we can pray and ask him to deliver us safely into his kingdom so that nothing that can come against us will prevent us from making it into the kingdom. Because that's our goal, to make it into the kingdom, to be conformed to the image of Messiah, and to be pleasing to the Father. Hallelujah. So, if you, have, if you haven't done so, continue to persevere in avoiding anything injected into your body that might cause you to become to, to come under the control of demonic spirits because that's one thing that we discovered in this lesson there is a link between drug use and demonic oppression and possession and that's recreational drugs and pharmaceutical drugs so pray into the most high and determine what he would have you to do if you're on prescription medications pray for healing pray for remedies pray like my, my sister did regarding what to use to bring healing to your body so that we can be free of pharmacia and all of its forms let's let's seek, seek the most high about which herb and which essential oil he would have us to use to bring healing to our bodies so I pray that this series has been a blessing to you, that you've gotten something out of it. I pray that the Most High bless and keep you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and make His face to shine upon you and grant you peace. I pray that He will give us wisdom and insight during this time and that He will cause us to draw together like a threefold cord, not easily broken. Let us have unity in the Ruach, Father. Unity. Let us pray for one another. Though we may not even know each other, let us pray for one another. Because in the, re in the realm of the spirit, you can help us to know what we can't know in the physical. So please help us to endure this time, Father. Please help us to be like the Assembly of Philadelphia, who, because they kept the word of your patience, you kept them and promised to keep them from the hour of temptation which was to come upon the whole world to try those that dwell upon the earth. And Father, thank you for revealing to us the connection between this disease that's come out and the demonic that it's attached to. Thank you for revealing truth. Please protect us and keep us from its wicked influence. Thank you for joining me, brothers and sisters. Shalom.